Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Hallelujah. Lord. It's good to be together again worshiping. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Uh, wonderful week. I pray your week as well. Still praying for that COVID virus. I think we have two people. We got to pray God to heal that thing, dry it up. I noticed it said it don't like the sun, so we know the real maker of the sun, so God could just dry that thing up, get rid of it. It's caused a lot of hardship, a lot of people we know, uh, families, churches affected. I know the devil's mad, hallelujah, but you know what? I'm glad. So I've learned a lesson. Whenever the devil's fighting us, it's because he's trying to hinder us from getting a blessing, and I'm going to get my blessing from the Lord. Hallelujah. We need to pray for peace throughout the country and all the turmoil, the difficulties people are facing. Hallelujah. Pray for those families that had people that died due to the unrest, uh, all the turmoil. It seems like hate wants to win, but I'm telling you, Jesus wins, and the win of love is the winner. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Satan has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Hallelujah. I got a text from somebody. They said, Brother Klein, I think you got cloned. I said, what does that mean? Somebody that says they're me says, my niece has a birthday, and they need to send her some money, and I'll they're clever with this one, Sister Bell. I'll pay you back later. So they're going to take money from people and expect me to have to pay back. So I had to write everybody. We've been kind, so don't pay any money. Hallelujah. Our good friend said, we know this couldn't be you, Brother Klein, because you wouldn't do that. I love my nieces. God bless your nieces. But not, not no $400 worth, Sister Bell. Hallelujah. They're like $25, $50, maybe 100 if they graduate. Hallelujah. Brother Klein, you're generous. But only graduate once, right? Hallelujah. 400, that's like for a wedding gift when they're married or something, sure. you know. But praise God. Uh, that's all taken care of. So anybody on the Facebook, sorry all that happened. And you wise guys that are thieves, repent and get your money right. Hallelujah. Because that money you're going to get is just going to be burned up to nothing. Hallelujah. Sure. In Jesus' name, thank you for our friends and our family, uh, workers and fellow laborers in Africa. Some of them are struggling due to this unrest. Because uh, their livelihood and income is quite limited. And of course, uh, everywhere we went, it seems like there was somebody that was worse off and somebody that's better off. Uh, but we know that that's, that's a lie from the devil he's sending. Uh, the Antichrist spirit seems like it wants to take over. But greater is he within me. Say it, greater yeah. is he that is in me than he that's in the world. His name is Jesus. He has overcome and he will overcome. Uh, some think we're going to have to go through the whole ordeal i hope the lord comes and gets us because if we're going to a wedding i don't think he wants us beat up so praise the lord if he's getting ready we need to witness like never before we need to be bold like never before brother hill had about six people coming i thought man we're going to max out a little porch but that's okay hallelujah if we got to extend that way preach to some down there on the steps over there so sure miss molly won't mind we'll get permission first sister bell we don't want the police coming hallelujah saying y'all taking over my yard but they could fit down there we can we could fit probably 200. We won't have enough car space, but praise God. Hallelujah. Brother Klein, you're thinking way out there. I'm telling you, keep asking them, keep loving them, and keep reaching out. So let's pray for our island, St. Thomas. This is St. Thomas Outreach, part of the Leewood Islands for United Pentecostal Church. This is our porch. We got our fan out because it's quite hot. It's probably 90-something degrees with pretty heavy humidity. So let's all stand and ask the Lord's blessing for our time together. Remember those that we've been praying for and been trying to reach. Uh, lost loved ones. We have a family friend, Warren Smith. He had a heart procedure, uh, so we want to pray for Warren Smith's family. Uh, if you can just think of Smith, ask God to touch his heart. Uh, our suffering friends and families uh, in Africa that are facing the struggles due to the coronavirus. Uh, some of their churches just came back today, so it's going to be a little tough. Uh, we have friends in other parts of the world still can only have five people or ten people. Uh, th th this isn't from God. Uh, I, uh, I think we, we just need to pray that God to help us. We want to be safe. Uh, we don't want to be contagious. But we want God to dry the situation up. And I believe we can have prevailing prayer. How about you? Amen. Let's lift our hands and thank the Lord for His blessing. Lord Jesus, we thank You for Your bountiful blessing. For the work of the Holy Ghost, God. We ask that Your Spirit would come down in our midst and fill us, God, with Your Spirit. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus upon our minds upon our hearts and our spirit. Wash us in your blood. Let us be cleansed, O God, of all transgression or iniquity, any hindrance, God, that would stop the flow of your spirit. We plead the blood of Jesus upon St. Thomas Outreach. All our friends, our families, our loved ones that we're reaching out to, the French community, hallelujah, even the Chinese and Asians, hallelujah, even the Arabs, God, we ask God to reach them in Jesus' name. And 
all of our Caribbean people, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus upon this work. Let your hand, God, move the hearts and give us a boldness. We plead the blood of Jesus and rebuke that coronavirus. We ask that you dry it up and let it dissipate. All those families that are affected and suffering, God, due to the death and the sorrow and the sickness and all the financial hardship in the name of Jesus Christ. We plead the blood of Jesus upon the church, upon this earth, upon your work, upon the kingdom of God. We push back the gates of hell. We rebuke and bind the devourer that would come against them in Jesus' name. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Lord, let the gospel be proclaimed. Let your people have a Holy Ghost boldness that your spirit will go forth with fervency, anointing, and power. In Jesus' name, and bless our visitors and bless our friends and reach our families. Let the backsliders be stirred. Hallelujah. Let the conviction of the Holy Ghost be upon the hearts of your people. We plead the blood of Jesus on St. Thomas. Let the church and the work of God grow and let it be for your glory. We give you honor. We give you praise and we thank you, Jesus. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Thank we you. thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Amen. It's hard for me not to want to shake hands, but we can shake hands this away. We can shake feet that away. Hallelujah. We can do a high five far away. No hugs and kisses. My wife's going to be kissing y'all so much when we finally get back to normal. She says she got to make up for the coronavirus. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. It's so good to be here one more time. Get to get the fellowship. I've got a good time in the Lord. Amen. We're going to start off singing this chorus Majesty, Majesty, worship His Majesty.
reverse man. Mm -hmm. In my heart, dear friends, I'm never really going to be the The song that Jesus did, we could say.
bless you today. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, the Reverend Klein. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Amen. the Lord. It's good to be together. Hallelujah. Amen. I did have uh, two thoughts that came before we get into the message. We had somebody that we knew when we were young Christians, uh, Paul and Anna Bado. Uh, they're elder, not real old, but older than me. And uh, they think they may have coronavirus, so they asked prayer this morning. So I thought we'll ask for that right now. And also Pastor Herbert, I believe Thursday he said he was working and somebody on the job fell off the roof and uh, they expired. So we want to pray for that family, Pastor Herbert, as well as the the battle family so let's stand and ask god's blessing be upon them hallelujah lord jesus we lift these requests and petitions to you lord you are the great i am you are the miracle worker lord where there seems to be no way you are the way maker lord we ask you to help pastor herbert's family god and that family of that individual that passed away from that construction job give them the right words and wisdom that they could share the truth and help to comfort that family from that tragedy Lord we plead the blood of Jesus on Paul and Anna battle touch your body we speak to that coronavirus we ask you to rebuke it rebind it let it be removed give them strength and let a miracle happen Lord in Jesus name Lord we know you are a miracle worker you are the great I am hallelujah before all other things you are that worker Praise God. Let's give him a hand clap of thank praise you. and thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. We love you, Jesus. Thank we you. thank you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Just wave at your neighbor and smile. Show your teeth even if you only got one. Hallelujah. What they say, you got to smile while you still got them. Hallelujah. Amen. Show your teeth while you still, still can. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, I, have, I was ready for Father's Day. So, I sent a Father's Day greeting to my stepdad and he told me, Father's Day next week, hallelujah. So I, I had another message, and uh, so I don't want to preach two good Father's Day messages when I got one good one. So I, I had to scramble. I had something already kind of in the works. A lot of times, preachers, we have different things working in our minds. So so this one's a little abbreviated, but uh, I know, brother, don't be disappointed, brother. Yeah, wonderful worship. Our visitors are going to come. We're going to be shocked one day, and it's like, no more space, brother Klein. Uh, and y'all going to say, yep, we, we agree. We, it happened. And when we get to that new place, we're going to say, fill that. And it's like, no place. Brother Klein, you just like have blind faith. No, I'm telling you, God is a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. And, they, and there's people that want to love Him. And they want to get to know Him. And we have to be that example. Amen? Amen. Thank you for all our sponsors and supporters throughout the world. All our friends, our loved ones. This is St. Thomas Outreach. It's our porch. But eventually, uh, we'll have a, a place uh, how, how God provides, we, we'll give Him the glory for it. We do have a fan. Hopefully it's not loud. We'll see as we go through uh, in the recording. I think it's okay. But if not, we don't want our ladies to pass out, so thank the Lord. And Brother Hill, if you need to move over there, I'm not going to bother you. So, But if you're all right, you're all right. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sister Klein's uh, checking the volume there. In Galatians 4 and 19, Paul was writing to the church in Galatians. And he said, My little children, of whom I travail in birth again, until Christ be formed in you. Hallelujah. Say it with me. Until Christ be formed in me. Hallelujah. Now he's writing to his family, a church family. And, and even though from what we know by history, Paul wasn't married, he referred to him as his children. Uh, as a, I told kind of a, a unique story one of the young girls I think she was 10 or 12 it's kind of hard to tell because they're kind of small uh, they stay small when they're young and then all of a sudden they kind of shoot up but this little girl came received the Holy Ghost got baptized in Jesus name and we had a big group of visitors with us we was around 60 we, did, we didn't quite double yet but we was getting close to and and I said look these these are Americans and sometimes Americans we can be foolish we leave money in our wallets when we should leave it in, in, the, in the safe. So you have to watch these handbags. And that little girl looked up at me and she says, Pastor Klein, you trust me? I says, well, you got the Holy Ghost, don't you? She said, yes, sir. I says, you wouldn't steal? No, sir, I wouldn't. I said, well, make sure nobody else doesn't either. Hallelujah. 
So that little word of encouragement, let that girl know we trust her. And it was important because I didn't want to have a bad experience that they would lose something while we're praying in the altars for people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. So long story short, this little girl brought her, her mother, her sister, her aunt, her brother, two brothers, which are now young preachers, her grandmother, hallelujah. So this little girl was the spiritual mother to her real mom, hallelujah. So the spiritual realm, sometimes it doesn't work the way biological works, hallelujah. But of course she knew, I better not tell mom something, but she understood when she knew about praying and fasting and necessity of getting closer to God and what new life class is about. And eventually she kind of mentored her mom to where, of course, the mom became the ladies' leader. Hallelujah. And the two young sons are preachers, and I pray they get a boldness and the Holy Ghost to go start a church and do it really soon. Hallelujah. Because their country needs the gospel. Hallelujah. So when we look at it, Paul was reaching out to his spiritual children in travail. Because it takes a travail. One of the tragic things in Africa when the mothers uh, were there, if they were giving birth, uh, the, 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 they call them nursing sisters, if they yell too loud, the nursing sister goes smack them and tell them to be quiet and don't cry out like that. And I thought that seems a bit harsh, but I thought, well, I'm, I'm not ever going to have a child here anyway, so I don't even want to see your doctor. Hallelujah, I want to go to the other one. So if they beat me, I can pick up something. And, no, I wouldn't fight them back, but... Hallelujah. I don't want to be beat when I'm, when I'm needing to be healed. Amen? Amen but in travail, I haven't heard of anybody that can give birth to a child without having some suffering. There's going to be some uneasiness. Uh, the mothers, sometimes they get the back pain and they start wobbling. I know sometimes they say the weebles wobble. And so as they start to wobble, it's such a cute thing because you know soon uh, things are starting to adjust on their body for the baby to come. And then when it comes, it's such a a uh, tr- tragic thing I believe for the mom and the baby but the result is the joy yes. and the happiness that it brings hallelujah Amen. hallelujah Amen. I like our little visitor Zamarian uh, Brother Hill's kind of adopting him don't be surprised if he ends up at the house praise God That's we'll right. see hallelujah but, but spiritually we're trying to invest into this little child the word of God and Amen. giving him a little instrument and boy he's doing so well with timing hallelujah but we could see a future in that child even though he's young but God can use him to be a mother and a father, a spiritual father to other people, reaching out, being a soul winner, making a difference while we can. Amen. But he said, not just being my child out of travail, but that Christ be formed in you. Hallelujah. So we want to be like Jesus. We want to have Christ, Jesus Christ, formed in us. The whole point and the premise of Christianity, Christianity is being a reflection of Jesus in our life. Out of a scale of 1 to 10, it's the big 10. Hallelujah. All the other stuff, and there's wonderful things. I enjoy the worship. I enjoy the time that we spend together, the moving, sweeping of the Holy Ghost, almost like the, the waves coming up and down upon the shore of the sea, the move of God. But the most important thing, all, all that's important, but all of that is secondary to us being like Jesus. Amen. He wants us to be Christ-like. Amen. God made us and formed us to be born. We can have a physical birth. Now we must pursue to have a spiritual birth to be born again in Jesus Christ so that we can be like Him. Hallelujah. Amen. So how do we get it? It's quite simple. If we want to be Christ-like, if we want to be like Jesus, it means we must have, uh, he, he must be the goal that we're following. He must be setting the model. When I worked in the shipyard, we had a big blueprint. And that blueprint, there was a giant floor. It was huge. i never seen a floor this big. And it was clean. And there wasn't nothing there. And I thought, what kind of job is this? And then they gave me knee pads. You know what knee pads are? So you're going to use those. So you wear those out. Hallelujah. And so you're on your hands and knees mostly the day. You actually take the physical size of a scaled down blueprint. And you make the actual piece of whatever it is they're making. And I had to make it out of wood. And they would take that piece and they'd go outside. And they'd measure it up next to the ship before they bent that steel or the iron. And, and they would see, is this the right pitch? Did the engineers get it right? Was their calculation good? Was the architect's design perfect enough that the, that, that the draftman understood what he said? And all the pieces working together. So to be Christ-like is to take God's word, put it in our heart, and make the pieces function and work together so that we can be like Him. Amen. Hallelujah. He's the model. He is the, the highest of good. He's the source of our wisdom. He's the standard of perfection. 
He's the unrivaled champion of the scripture. Without Jesus, uh, there'd be a lot of unexplained ceremonies, Amen. some unachieved purposes, some unsatisfied longing, and some unfulfilled prophecies. Without Jesus, the Old Testament law would be like a river that lost its way into the sea. And it doesn't have a benefit for the land. It's as though the sea had just reclaimed it. Hallelujah. Like having a swift flying arrow that is just going but would not finding a target. Hallelujah. Seeing the magnificent eagle that's roosting upon its perch. Hallelujah. But it doesn't ever find its prey. So we know that Jesus Christ is the focal point of the law. As I said, I, Brother Hill was using my binoculars and he was looking. And I said, I have an illustration I use with those. I said, turn him around. And when he did, he said, man, everything's far. I said, well, that's what the Old Testament is. But when we turn him around, the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Hallelujah. So in the whole theme, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, there's a purpose. And there's a focal point, And there's a convergence. And it's all pointing to Jesus. And Jesus is pointing to grace. And it all emerges that we can have Him and have grace and the blood of Jesus in our life. It's the theme of all that for every dispensation of time as you go through the seven dispensations. Everything is preparing you that we can know who the person is. Who's that great personage that we are going to pursue? Who is that type and that shadow that we're going to follow? His name is Jesus. For every shadow and every type we're following after Him. Amen. Amen. He is the high art superlative. As you look at a writer, his writer makes a masterpiece. He's the composer's. That makes the great symphony, the architects, his signature creation. The artist has an exposition of his work and others can see and maybe even buy it. Most artists uh, suffer as an artist. I heard them saying they're starving artists. I heard about farmers that are poor. And my wife says, there's no poor farmers. But if they don't have no crops, they don't have much to eat. Hallelujah. So as you look at an artist, if he's not selling his work, it's just something that's going to accumulate the climbers of Mount Everest making their way. The scientists Nobel Prize. The soldiers Congressional Medal of Honor. Even the actors Oscar. Although I think they just talk about themselves all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. The Olympians gold medal. That, that is an achievement. A lot of things I can't do what they do. Hallelujah. Although I do try to look to see what could, could I do to actually make it. I think the closest thing I could do would be the target practice. Everything, but then they got to run with it. So there, there I go. I lost that already. Hallelujah. They got to run, get on a bike, get down, shoot, and all that stuff. So man, But to just shoot, I think I could do okay. Hallelujah. Uh, the, but every sports hero or the champion that wins his ring or the miner's mother load of, of whatever ore that they're searching for, either gold or silver or whatever, judges landmark decision and the inventor's uh, his windmill and the investor's greatest uh, 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 windfall and even the inventor's greatest invention it all comes down to big or little and Jesus is the best he's the highest he's the greatest he's the biggest Amen. he's the farthest he's the widest he's the richest and he's the finest so of all that the world is pursuing and all those that we can look up to and say that's a good role model Jesus is even higher Amen. Jesus is even better but he's so far away from any one of us but every one of us can emulate and we can better our life and we're measuring ourselves to the Word of God, not to other people. So God can make me as a better person. No matter how little I am, He can make me better. Hallelujah. I may not be a, as better as somebody else, but He can make my life better. And as I pursue His life, that betterness is going to make me want to share and love and give it to somebody else. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5 and 2. And we walk in love as Christ so loved us. This world is needing something. I think the devil is angry because he knows the church's great revival is about to take off. That end time revival we heard out our whole life. That could be the only reason why it seems like total pandemonium has taken place. To have the churches shut down, have people scared to death about a sickness that hardly isn't that bad. But the, 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 the money and the finances that people are going to be restricted to. I'm telling you, we should push back those gates and say as, as bad as that the devil's hate is, we're going to have the love of God flow through our lives. How as troubled as people are, we're going to reach a hand out of love and compassion and say, you know what, that's some terrible situation. Let's pray about that. Let's ask God to give you a little bit of peace in your mind. Because we know a God, His love passes understanding. Hallelujah. I remember once I tried to win a friend of mine 
to the truth. I was real young, so I didn't know how really how to do it. And, and so I was trying to get him to come to church because I knew that's where I got the Holy Ghost. I figured, you come to church, you can get the Holy Ghost too. And he says, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. And, and, I, and I said, he said, well, what's it really like, you know, to get that Holy Ghost you're talking about? I said, man, the best thing I can imagine, most bass where we're from is about five, six pounds. I said, it's like catching a 12-pound bass, which is unheard of. I mean, that'd be like record book. You will be in the records and get the medal and award and all that. And I said, it's even better than that. Hallelujah. Because you can imagine what a 12-pound bass would, would be. And you'd be in the newspaper. You'd be in the, the fisherman journals. You'd get your awards. You'd be at the state title and championship. And maybe even have it stuffed. And everybody that ever comes to see you, you can point at that fish right there. But I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is even better than that. Hallelujah. The joy of the Holy Ghost. The joy unspeakable and full of glory. Words cannot really express how wonderful it is. Y'all remember the day you got the Holy Ghost? We got to get that stirring of God's Spirit in our life. Have that stirring of God's love. And not just have it, but we're walking in love. With Christ as He loved us, we need to have that love flow to others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't need to be at loss at what to do in any given situation. We, we can look, we can use Jesus as our example. We have Him as our example. He is our testimony. His words and He is our record. That's why we have to look at that and let the Word of God steep into our hearts and our lives. What should we do if we're attacked? Hallelujah. Let's see what Jesus did. What should we do if we're criti criticized? Jesus was false ac had false accusations. I reminded my wife, when we was facing a spiritual situation, I said, imagine they took their fan and, and their fist and punched Jesus in the face and he was totally innocent. And they gave him a scourging and whip for, for, for healing that he didn't need, but we need. Hallelujah. And he died an innocent man for us that are guilty. Hallelujah. So you start realizing we don't need to have the little pity party. Y'all say that? A pity party? Hallelujah. Having that little pity party. <laughs> Hallelujah. You to, sometimes you just got to suck up that uh, lip, go wash your face, and get out there and realize it's not so bad. Hallelujah. When Jesus was criticized, what did He do? When Jesus was lied upon, what did He do? When Jesus was betrayed, what did He do? When Jesus was forgotten or rejected, what did He do? When He was victimized, what did He do? All we have to do is look at Jesus and use Him as our example. Hallelujah. That's right, Lord. Let's lift our hands and love Him. Lord, we thank You, God, for all that You faced, all that You've done, Your example to show us that we can be like You, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost go forth and minister to Your people, Lord. Somebody that's hurting, God, their spirit and their heart is injured. Let the healing blood of Jesus go forth, O God. Men that broken hearted, O God, give them peace in their troubled spirit. Hallelujah. Those bills that are piled up and those unknowing answers, God, You are able to give them clarity, a clear mind and divine direction in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm telling you, Jesus is a, a way maker. He says for every trial, He will make a way. I remember the time we was facing struggle. I think I said it before. And as we faced that trouble, I was working three jobs. My wife was sick. She almost died. The, the child died and it was a lot of money, about 35000 Dollars and it's like a house when we were first married. And so I, I, as a missionary, we knew we couldn't be bankrupt. So I didn't think it was a good idea anyway. So I worked as much as I could to pay it off. And the, the phone, the collectors kept calling and I talked to people. And they says, no, just send them five bucks. They can't do you nothing. And eventually work out a plan and you'll do it. But the pressure was unrelenting. And, and, I, and I didn't know what to do. And I just stopped. My wife was upstairs in, in the bedroom. And I said, Lord... You said for every trial you'll make a way of escape. I, don't, I may be missing out on a blessing, but I can't take any more. So i got to surrender to you this situation. Lord, you got to help me with this because I can't do it on my own. And it's almost like a, a, a weight, almost 100 pounds or 200 pounds was lifted off of my shoulders. And I felt the peace in my spirit. And the Lord said, I'm going to help you and you're going to find a way. My wife had been praying that we would, I would find another job that would make more money. And sure enough, we lost our part-time jobs and my wife says well I was praying because I don't want you to die I just got a good husband I don't want you to die I want I don't want you to die I said why do you think I'm gonna die we're working hard and she, and, and she says but I'm praying N not just to take the job he's gonna give you a better job and sure enough just as she said I got the job making as much money as all three jobs together hallelujah and over time it didn't take too long and I never forgot what I told the Lord and what I promised and what I pledged I did and committed to exactly what what he said hallelujah 
Sometimes we think it's all on our own and it's all on our shoulders. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But we just got to reach out to Him. He'll make a way. Every trial, there is a way of escape. Sometimes we just got to look for it to get there. Yes, Sometimes any situations, normally where I'm standing, I don't mean to sound paranoid. We was overseas too long. They had too many terrorist attacks. Even before 9-11, two different restaurants were bombed simultaneously. The Planet Hollywood and the Hard Rock Cafe. That's not two places I go to a lot. But those were American type uh, restaurants in South Africa. And one was TGI Friday. I did go there before the music got real loud. And so uh, as we was eating, I'd always look to see what do you do if somebody comes in and they got guns, where are you going? I'm going to go this way. I tell my wife, go under the table that way. We've got to go out here. Hallelujah. Don't want to go too far this way, that way. Hallelujah. Brother Klein, you do things like that? Yeah, I'm telling you. We traveled. We was in places where you even to go to the bathroom. I go stand. But Brother Hillsom, I listen to my wife, and she has to tell me it's okay. But Sister Bell, if she doesn't tell me it's okay, I'm coming in there. Because that means a man is in there, and they got a knife at her throat, and I'm have to defend her. I'm not a conscientious objector. If i got to fight him, I'll, I'll do it. Hallelujah. But if i got to go to, to meet Jesus to save my wife, I'll do it. Hallelujah. I'm not wanting to look for it so y'all don't come fight me now. Amen. Hallelujah. But I will defend her. I'm going to tell you the truth. Hallelujah. And so she would do it. And there's times we went and we stopped at a place, Sister Bell, and all of a sudden I felt something in the Holy Ghost. I mean, like, just like that. I says, we're not going here. Let's go. She says, but we got to get gas. We got to travel so far. We got 200 more miles. I said, not here. So we went down the road and you listen on the radio. Somebody's robbing somebody and they shot somebody. If we'd have been stuck there, we'd had to stay and be a witness and all the rest. I didn't see anybody, but I just didn't feel good. We stopped at a restroom and, and they got arrest areas in the States and they're really nice. Some of our Africans would be like, I can't believe all this is here and it's free. I'd want to put a house here. Hallelujah. Y'all know what I'm talking about if you've ever seen them. But sometimes you get criminals that escape and it's quite dangerous. Amen. And once they had a, a group of about 10 convicts that escaped. And I told my wife, I said, we're not stopping here. We're going to go to a McDonald's. I'm not crazy about McDonald's. They got a good breakfast, but that's about it. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we stopped at McDonald's. They got a good coffee for a dollar. Save some money. Hallelujah. But... I said, let's use that bathroom. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. But either way, there's people here, and there's at least a camera. Hallelujah. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So we have to realize, and we have to follow that sensitivity that God gives us. Not that we're fearful, but we do have to be uh, obedient to what God is telling us to do. And we're going to have to walk with Him. Hallelujah. To be like Jesus means that we must obey His commandments. Hallelujah. I think I teach this when you put the Bible in one word. That word is subjection. I'm surrendering to God and His plan and His will for my life. Hallelujah. I put it in one short sentence. It's the fall and the redemption of mankind. I'm glad He didn't leave us fallen. He's also given us a redemption. And it takes almost the entire thing to fulfill it. Because even at the very end, when it's all over, then we're going to see what the next step is. But He's given us an example how we've fallen in our nature, but we have a redemption. And the commandments are given that we can have them as a, a directive that we can use it in obedience. In 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, he says, bringing into captivity. Hallelujah. That's, it's, it's hostage now. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. This is something. It's almost like when you're at a war and you're taking prisoners. But the prisoners isn't from your neighbor or from uh, things or even animals. It's something in your mind. The captivity of your thoughts. And what is it? To the obedience of Jesus Christ into your mind. I heard it said sometimes our problem is our stinking thinking. Hallelujah. Amen. So we got to get our, our neck, uh, a checkup from our neck up. Sometimes our mind, hallelujah, has a problem. I met a lot of people. They can be negative and God can deliver them and they can start having it. But some, they, they enjoy their turmoil. They enjoy their problems. They almost, uh, the, the, their handicap, literally, their crutch is a crutch. And that's a shame. And they can be delivered. But you need to be a little bit sympathetic. As much as I don't like to show weakness myself. If I'm weak, I, it's, it's, and you see it, it's not because I'm like trying to brag about it. Hallelujah. Because it's quite obvious and I can't help it. Hallelujah. But I've learned it's not my fault if, if sickness comes or disease or situation. But try to give them just a little bit of sympathy to know God needs to help them. What a miserable life. God can help them and deliver them. And give me the right words that you can help. And you can, you can change their thoughts. Well, Jesus isn't, he's not just our facilitator, our aid, or our consultant. Hallelujah. He speaks with words, with absolute authority. He's omnipotent, he's all-knowing, and omniscient. He's everywhere, and he knows everything. 
He has the perspective of eternity. We see things from our personal view. Uh -huh. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Yes, He's the beginning and the ending. Yes, He's the first and the last. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He wrote it out and He knows what's going to end. Hallelujah. I, I want to jump in the story and say, okay, where does my story end? And if I could put my little piece in there, is that I'm standing at the door and I'm walking in and I made it. Hallelujah. That's what I want to hear. Well, enter in. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. So that, tries, uh, that inspires me to try my best to do good and do what I can to be faithful. Amen. Don't let any hindrance or what other people say stop you from your goodness or from your faithfulness. And I believe that's what the devil's intention is, is to stop the church from speaking the truth of life. Because the life of God's word is light in the darkness. It seems like the devil wants to put a curtain over the world that everyone, they can't see what's going on. But I'm letting you know our truth and the word of God is a beacon of hope. It's a beacon of light and it can pierce the darkness, rightfully dividing, hallelujah, what this world has and giving it to Jesus. Hallelujah. Before he was arrived, he was there. And one man said, he's like the miracle that's between the, the virgin's womb and then the empty tomb. Hallelujah. He filled the space. He started from a miracle and ended in a miracle. Hallelujah. Amen. He came through a door that marked no entrance and left through a door that said no exit. Hallelujah. Amen. When no one thought he could come in, he came. And when he left, there was no way he could have left, but he was already gone. And I tell people at Christmas time, I mean at Easter, they didn't roll away the stone to let him out. They had to roll that stone out so we could see he's not there. Hallelujah. He's powerful. He conquers every disease. He can still every storm. He can quiet chaos. He can restore organs. Give you a new heart. Hallelujah. We've seen it with our own, not, not inside the heart, but the doctor saw it when they checked it. He can destroy demons, and I'll come back to that. He can defeat the, de the, the debtors. Speak creatively. Creativity. He, he teaches without error and knows the future. Amen. When we talk about organs, I remember when we went to the hospital to go pray for somebody. A friend of mine, I used to have a, 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 a vending machine sales route. Canned drinks and snacks. And it was NOLA, uh, New Orleans uh, Tours. And one of the men, he was always happy and he looked quite sad. I said, sir, what's wrong? He says, man, my mom's sick. Man, it just touched my heart. I felt something touch my spirit. And I says, what, what is it? And he says, she's got congenitive heart failure. They don't think she'll make it through the night. And, and, and we, we didn't know anything about this. I didn't even know what it was, Sister Bell. I had to look. I didn't even know what congenital heart failure was. And I found out, basically, the pressure of the valves, is, uh, it's weakened in such a state, it's almost like toothpaste. And that one pressure of pump, it can go right through, and there's nothing they could do to stop it because it can't sew it back together because it's deteriorated. And I thought, that's sad. Would you mind? Our church offers prayer. We don't charge anything. Well, if you agree and your mom agrees, we'll go in and pray for her. He said, sure, she agreed. We went in, went to the CCU directly. Uh, RNs, I think we had to put on, a, 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 yeah, I think we had to put a aprons and gloves, if I'm not mistaken. And we wasn't going to take long. We went in, and her name is Nola Edwards. We went and prayed for that lady. And, and I just felt the peace of God. I said, Mrs. Edwards, God's going to help you because w we met you for a reason. He says, I'll create in you a clean heart and a new one he'll put within us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I plead your blood upon her heart. God, touch her body. Let this witness come to pass as a testimony of your power and your blood. To these doctors, to these nurses, and Mr. Edwards and all their family, they'll know that you care about them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Didn't think about it. We left. Wasn't really a real powerful prayer that I thought anything special about. I saw Mr. Edwards a few days later. He said, man, you won't believe it. I said, your mom's okay? He said, yeah, she's more than okay. They went in to go see if they could help her the next day to see if she can qualify for heart surgery to replace it. He says, God put a new heart. She didn't even need a new heart. There was already a new one in there. They had to go double check their records. Surely we made a mistake. Surely something was wrong. I said, no, God's a, a way maker. He can do it. God is still in the miracle business. How about you? Hallelujah. Thank you for what he does. Let's give him a praise. We thank you, Lord, for your miraculous healing power. Thank you for working and touching that family. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We got to obey his commandments and pursue after him. I always give an example of those commandments as like a mirror. Of, it shows our shortcomings and our failures and how, how we failed. But when we come to God in repentance, He doesn't want us to dwell on our failures. He wants us to confess to Him our shortcomings. Like when they came into the garden and God was looking for Adam, 
he, God knew exactly where Adam was, but he cried out, Adam, Adam, where art thou, Adam? And it's like, well, I'm over here. Well, what you doing over there? Well, I'm, 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 I'm ashamed. Well, why are you ashamed? Well, because I'm naked. Well, how do you know that you're naked? Well, that woman that you gave me, she messed me up with that fruit. And what the woman blamed the serpent. So that lets you know we don't need to blame other people. Take, take responsibility for things that happen. Sometimes things won't go good. Sometimes you are, you are rightly wronged. Right. Hallelujah. But you're not going to have to go to hell over it. You could say, I'm not going to let this take me to hell. Forgive them. Forget about it. Doesn't mean you have to let them continue to abuse you. You can hold on and say, nope, that's enough. Hallelujah. And walk away. But, but you can say, hallelujah, I'm not going to let this take me out. I refuse to let hypocrites and backsliders determine my destiny and it's not going to be going to hell. I'm telling you that. Hallelujah. I went through too much already. I want to see Jesus. How about you? I want to see Him because I love Him. How about you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so as we love Him, we need to be like Him and we're going to follow after Him. And the greatest thing that He wants us to do as we come to Him as, is to, to be like Jesus is that we submit and surrender to Him. James, this is the brother of Jesus, tells us in James 4, and 17, he says, submit yourselves, therefore, unto God. When you're submitted, that means you're surrendering to God's will and to God's plan. And say, Lord, I've tried it on my own, just like me in that living room. Saying, Lord, I tried to figure it out. I thought I had these other jobs lined up, and they seemed to be doing okay. We was starting to finally get ahead, and, and I realized, man, I, I, I can't do it without you. I need you to help me. But that's being surrendered. But as you submit, you, you're letting Him direct you. And then the next part, he says, and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And that resistance really isn't uh, just, no, you want a cigarette? No, I don't smoke. Oh, you want a drink? No, I don't drink. Not, not just shaking your head, no. It really means, it's a military term, to rage and battle against it. Hallelujah. Yeah. So resist the devil, rage and battle against him, because Jesus has defeated him. We don't need to allow him. The Bible says, don't give place to the devil. Yeah. You know what that means? That's your name, place, setting. When you walk into certain uh, functions, they, they have a reservation, Reverend Klein, Missionary Klein, whatever they're going to call me. And as I sat, I knew my spot's here, my wife's there. Sometimes they put you across from each other and there's somebody else next to you. But you knew where your spot was. So we don't give place to the devil. We don't give him an invitation at our table, in our living room, in our minds, in our hearts, in our lives. We resist him. We rage and battle against him. Hallelujah. And when you have the blood of Jesus behind you, he's not leaving because you're fighting. He's going to leave because Jesus has already won. Then he will flee. And he's not going to win. So submission is surrendering your rights to God's will. Accepting a higher authority over your, your life. And forfeiting your position or privilege or place. At Gethsemane, Jesus did this. When he submitted to his Father. When he said, if there be any other will, let this cup pass from me. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, let not my will be done, but Lord, let your will be done. And he had to partake of that cup. And he realized. And he could see the potential of all the sin of the world that he was going to have to take. And he was the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. At the new birth, we surrender our lives to God. We surrender our bodies, our souls, and even our spirits to Jesus Christ. And he tells us in Romans 1, 12, 1 and 2. This is the greatest present you can give to the Lord. He says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God. It's not a dead sacrifice. It's alive. It's something that He can use. And I remember even as a little boy, I think I talked about this the other, other week on the day of Pentecost. He says that the body is a temple and it's a temple of the Holy Ghost. And as we present our bodies, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost, for God's Spirit to dwell, He left an empty place just to us, which is a reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. But be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. That's why prayer is important. Fellowship is important. Bible study is important. But getting renewed in the Holy Ghost and having your mind changed is important. Hallelujah. I know sometimes, uh, you know, missionaries, preachers, we're just like everybody else. I'm not any better than anybody. And sometimes I say, hey, I'm not going to listen to any of this stuff. I'm not checking any news. It seems like the world's going crazy. Hallelujah. I can pray for it. I want to have peace in my mind. I just want to know if it's over, I'm ready. Hallelujah. But, but sometimes don't let it overcome you. Don't let it overtake you. Sometimes turn it off. You don't have to hear about the latest this, this, this. It just seems like it doesn't end. Am I the only one? Hallelujah. But, but I can only 
uh, focus or want to focus on what I can change. And that's a life that I meet, a person that I can share with my heart having faith in it, not having confusion, not being confounded. I want to have a word of certainty, a word of love, a word of confidence to know that God is alive and He's real. I want to have a transformed, renewed mind through the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And that's what He wants us to be. To be like Jesus means that we take on His identity. Hallelujah. Romans 6 and 3. Know you not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into His death? Hallelujah. He's asking a question. This happened to the Romans, and the Romans needed to realize by the authority and the blood comes through Jesus Christ. And we got it through baptism in Jesus' name. And with that, now we have the power and the identity of His blood. If you go to any, any place, even here at the airport, I saw different uh, uh, airlines had different uniforms. Certain ones had a certain color. Certain ones had a certain design. Certain ones had different name tags. Uh, Delta doesn't have the American airline tag. I don't, I don't know for sure if Sunset had anything particular, but they had a different, uh, had a yellow, I believe. But, but sometimes uh, you, you can identify them at school, and, and school kids in Africa especially. There are certain colors that certain schools would have. So if somebody was acting out or doing something disrespectful, I could hear a teacher hollow. Is that one of such and such students over there? And next thing you know, boy, they're acting straight because they knew. Hey, the teacher could see. Or the headmaster can see. Or maybe one of the parents can see. Hallelujah. So when we identify with Jesus, we're taking His name. And with His name, we take on the bloodline. That gives us an identity. And that gives us a distinction from all others. The world is identifying with a whole lot of things. But we're identifying with Jesus. Hallelujah. And we get it through His name and His blood, and we receive that. It's transmitted onto us, put onto us, through baptism in Jesus' name. And it's that name that is supremely significant because that's something we should share as a badge of honor that everybody should have the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Almost finished, y'all. To be like Jesus means that we should be adopted into Him. Amen. Romans uh, 8.15 And you've received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we, we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. In this sense, we were, had a sinful nature and a sinful life. But now we can put on a new, like, a new life, a new likeness or identity that's now like His. Hallelujah. Through the adoption, that covers the gap of the identity of my ancestors. Hallelujah. Of all that I faced. The adoptions, it confers the legal and the moral force of a naturally born child to his children or to the parents. When a child is adopted, they sometimes can be called cruel names uh, by tormentors to deny them their identity, some in jealousy, some in legitimacy. For such of these words, they can fall meaninglessly at your feet and say, here, we're wanting to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember we was at a place and they was kind of mocking us, making fun. And they were asking, well, what church is that? And I told them, they said, oh, y'all are the happy clappers. I said, yes. I smiled real fast. We're happy and we do clap. Hallelujah. Praise God. You ought to come join us sometimes. They was being nasty and ugly, Sister Bell, but I just ignored it. And I just figured, yep, we are happy. And you look pretty sour. But I didn't say that. I just thought to myself, hallelujah. And we do. And we got something to be happy about. We know who Jesus is. And I'm no longer my own. I'm His. Hallelujah. And now I'm with His family. Hallelujah. My other family can leave me or forsake me. But He'll never leave me. My brother, he's a brother that sticks, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He'll never leave me or forsake me. Isn't he a wonderful Savior? Isn't he a wonderful God? Hallelujah. Lastly, to be like Jesus means to be defined by him. That we can have him give us our definition in our, in our life. How do you follow that, Pastor Klein? I don't understand. Well, one day a man named Nicodemus came to Jesus. And he says, we know that you're a teacher. And, 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 you're, and you're a prophet and we know God is with you because of the miracles that you do yes, sir. and I, we believe he was going to ask Bible scholars think he was going to ask are you the Messiah but he was at the beginning of his, uh, his reign he wasn't ready for that to be announced yet but he stopped him he said verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again yes. hallelujah Amen. he cannot see the kingdom of God and he thought how can I be born when I'm old he's 42 years old and he said verily verily this is something you should know, I say unto thee, in verse 3 and 5, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. That's how he's born. 
First of all, a lot of people can't even see it. But until they're born of water and spirit, you can't enter into the kingdom of God. It's by God's and, and, and the means of Jesus that we have entrance into the kingdom of God. Through His name we get adoption. We can have His blood applied to us. We receive His identity. We take His ideas and we're pursuing after Him through the Holy Ghost. Having our mind transferred. So all of our life, all of our physical body, our DNA, our coding, the parents that we have has made us who we are. And that is how we're going to grow. What determines what shape we are, how tall we get, what color eyes we have. Hallelujah. Sometimes how long you're going to live. Sometimes there's different little markers for cancer or sickness, diabetes, heart disease. All those things are in there. And eventually they're going to learn how to click those switches. I can't wait for that. You're going to go to the doctor and the doctor's like a, a switch. Like when they're going to the uh, electrical panel. They're going to start clicking off diabetes, clicking off breast cancer, clicking off hypertension. Hallelujah. How about clicking off some of the, uh-oh. Yeah, that's called food aways. Hallelujah. He could do it. And if we can do it, we can do it. But as they do these things in DNA, we can realize our birth, it defines our values and it gives us ideas and goals and ambitions and dreams and visions and gifts and talents and everything that's in life and what's next to come. Yes, it, it's our limits that we have reached and our abilities, but it's God's eternal destiny yes. that He defines us with no limits and no limitations. Hallelujah. So we could drop everything and we should pursue after Jesus Christ and direct everything that we can be conformed in His image and everything in our life to function like Him and to say, I want to be a part of building God's plan and be a part of building God's church. Hallelujah. Having a greater vision and having a greater purpose to pursue after Him. Hallelujah. So they had a little part about when you know God is in your life. You know God's in your life. When God is working around you always. God pursues a continuing love relationship with you that's real and it's personal. You know God is still in your life. God invites you to become involved with Him and His work. There's a place for everybody. I can't wait for the time others are going to preach, others are going to play, others are going to sing. Some can do better and I want them to do better. Hallelujah. Some can even teach. Some even a better missionary, a better one than me can come. And that's the goal. Our goal isn't to stay and keep our little four and no more. We want to see God reach people. Hallelujah. God speaks through the Holy Ghost, through the Bible and prayer and circumstance. And the church reveals Himself, His purpose and His ways. You know God is still working in our lives when He gives invitation for us to work with Him. And it's always going to lead to a crisis that's going to have you a temptation that's going to require faith and belief and action. Hallelujah. So sometimes crises are there. To help us to trust Him even more. Yes. With that trial that we face. I have a very sympathetic heart. And understanding to know people that don't have much. I don't really have a lot now. It's just that what I got. God has blessed it through the years. Amen. Hallelujah. But I am thankful for all that He's given me. You must remember. We're going to have to make adjustments in our life. So that we can join in to what God is doing. God doesn't modify His will for us. We modify our plan and will to fit His. God comes to us. So that we can experience and we can obey Him and we can love Him and accomplish things through us. And if we surrender, He's going to do it. Hallelujah. When you start to sense, is God working with me? Is He giving you peace in the midst of the storm and struggles and trials? When you run to God and not away from Him in the midst of a failure. When you trust His supernatural strength. When you're facing extraordinary, extraordinary situations. When you release control in your life and you permit Him to take the wheel. That's really tough. I remember what, we had a surgery and I couldn't drive. And Sister Klein, she was a good wife, but uh, they drive on the opposite side and there's a certain area. It's quite dangerous. People die, uh, I don't want to say every month, but pretty close to every other month somebody dies on that highway because they don't have any sense. And it's very similar to here. They can just go around a blind curve and, and kill you. And so I had to sit over there in the other seat. And it's really tough when your wife is driving. I'm telling her, honey, be careful. Look, there's going to be a truck right on the other side. And sure enough, how'd you know? I said, because I know this turn. There's gonna, and you can't see it, but you're going to be going pretty fast. And there's a truck in your lane, head on. And there's nowhere for you to go. You're going to die. You're going to meet that truck and die. Or you slow down and you get out the way. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's uncomfortable to surrender. But when you do, hallelujah, eventually I, I wasn't quite as bad. I told her I was sorry a hundred times at least. Amen. But I prayed through. Jesus, if Jesus ever comes, I think I got about 200 
pray through advance notices. Hallelujah. I don't think it works like that, but just in case. Hallelujah. Uh, because I thought for sure it was going to be with the Lord. When you find yourself drawn to the Lord in prayer and the Word, you know God's with you. When you, when you feel God wants to sh- you to share what He's given to you with others, the Word of God, you know He's with you. When you know God's character is being built and formed and conformed in His image, you know He's with you. And God is going to work all these things. Your priorities are going to be God's priorities. We know that He's still with us. Hallelujah. Let's stand. We know that God is, is reaching out, I believe, in an unprecedented way. Uh, I, I think all this is happening for a purpose. I think we have to change some of the way we think, the way things have to be, and say, okay, God, how do you want it to be? Where, how can you work through us that we can reach in an unprecedented way a world that's in a binding situation? You can set at liberty them that are bruised. And we'll be talking about that in a few weeks. Hallelujah. And you're going to set the captive free. You're going to heal the blind eyes and the spirit of liberty is going to go forth. I don't believe there's going to be a binding or restraint or prison ministry only. Hallelujah. It's nothing wrong with prison ministry, but I believe God wants us to speak out and speak that truth. Hallelujah. Pray for God to touch your mind and give your heart a clarity and a boldness that His Word can go forth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and we love you today, Jesus. We ask your Spirit to move and minister, God, in our midst. Lord, we ask that you stir up our spirits and our hearts, O oh God, that we can be formed and conformed into your image. Let that Spirit be birthed in us, O oh God, a renewal. Hallelujah. Being renewed in the Holy Ghost. Having a transformation of our minds. Having our thoughts like yours. Having our ideas focused as you are focused. Hallelujah. Putting our priorities according to your priorities. Let us have that sensitivity that we could speak the word of truth with boldness and with clarity. Speaking that word of confidence that can touch somebody's life. Let us be that light in the darkness that pierces through all the darkness the world is giving. Let us have that beacon of hope and let us be like that city that's set upon a hill. Giving people the love of God. Hallelujah. That passes understanding. And let it go forth. In the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
Yes, please.